Hello, my friends. Welcome to episode 138 of the Nope Coach podcast. I'm your host, Suzanne Kohlberg. Fumble forward. But before we get into that, I am celebrating that I had my first donation. So if you head to my website, suzannekohlberg.com, click on resources. There's a link there. If you're listening to this podcast via Spotify or Apple and you look at the show description, there is a little link there. If you're watching this on YouTube, I haven't updated all of them yet because that takes time. But this current episode, there is a link there that says ways to make my day and help support my t-shirt and try addiction. (laughs) Speaking of t-shirt, today's one, I don't know if I've showed this one before, if you're watching on YouTube, awkward with a killer whale. It's absolutely my current favorite. Anywho, if you enjoy the show, I appreciate that you, if you share it up on socials, if you're watching on YouTube, if you comment or share, and yeah, if you want to make a monetary donation, very much appreciated. I have my first one and I'm very, very excited by that. Today, fumbling forward, or as I like to say, fumble fuck forward or fumble fuck my way through. How often do we not pursue something because we can't do it perfectly? There is steps. There is a socially accepted way to do it. There is a status quo to maintain. And without that, we don't take action. And this show, like this is episode 138. The other day, I've been quite unwell. I had a nasty flu and I actually ended up with two episode 134s. <laughs> so two days in a row, I was that not with it that I had episode 134. And then the very next day, different topic, but once again, episode 134, And it wasn't till somebody reached out and said, do you know you've got like episode 134 twice, but with two different topics that I was like, ah, shit. So by the time I'd realized that I'd already recorded episode 135 and six, which ended up being now 136 and seven. And yes, yes, I could edit it. I could take it into a software and cut it and re-record bits. And, but this is life. Life is unedited. Life is real and raw and unfiltered and this is how it is. So I haven't bothered fixing up that fumble. I fumble forward and have corrected it. So now we are officially episode 138 and, you know, it could happen again. And if if things like that are going to stop you from taking action, if you really like to edit things, you do you. But for me, it's kind of like I'd rather just get it done and have it be out there and trust that the people who love my show and my energy and my vibe are going to be like, ah, that's just Suze. This is is how it is. Rather than me having to re-record and re-record. The very first course that I recorded, it never actually got to um, be sold. I'm sure I've spoken about this on the show before, but hang on, recap. We hired a venue. So there was the cost in the venue. Had hair and makeup done. That was another cost. Had multiple changes of outfit because, you know, if you're going to batch record, you can't wear the same thing. Um, Lighting. Had it all set up. Then the sun moved. So we had to change it. And then there was basically the script. We had like a teleprompter. I don't know how people who read the news and the weather deal with that shit. Like if anyone here has actually successfully used a teleprompter, let me know what is your secrets because I just kept stumbling on the words and I mispronounced it and we had to cut and start again and cut. And basically it was miserable. It was expensive. It was miserable and it never saw the light of day. And not that long ago, as I was deleting stuff off my computer to make space because I'd reached the maximum hard drive limit or whatever, I stumbled across that course, which funnily enough, ironically enough, was called From Chaos to Calm. And like, this is the thing, there was so much chaos in creating this course, there wasn't a whole lot of calm, trust me. And I think, you know, sometimes we see a very edited, very shiny, very curated sense of people that we follow 
and then behind the scenes is a total shit show. I don't tend to hide my shit show. <laughs> what you see is what you get. And I was just on a call this morning. It was the funniest thing. If you get on a Zoom call with me and um, you you guys be familiar with the waiting room function, uh, you can now, or it was new to me, personalize it with a photo. So mine is a picture of me with my zero fucks given mug. And anyway, the person was in the waiting room. I was doing something before I admitted them to the Zoom room. And when I they came from that and the camera came on, they're like, oh, my God, you look just like your picture. And I'm like, yes. There's, for me, I see very little point. And as I said, you do you. If you love getting dolled up and gussied up and having a photo shoot and, you know, presenting yourself in one way and then presenting yourself in another way, more power to you. But for me, I'm like, what you see is what you get. And, yes, I do have photos that I use and whatever, but once again, there's no makeup. I usually am wearing my ridiculous shirts because this is how I am. Fumbling forward for me has stopped me from being stilted, stopped me from hiding and perfecting and never actually putting anything out there. Like I said, that whole course, an entire course that, you know, hired a room, hair, makeup, lighting, equipment, never actually put it out there. Whereas now it's just kind of like fumble fuck my way forward stuff up the numbers, randomly say the wrong thing, whatever. But this is real life. And from here, this is what I can do sustainably. This is what I can show up for every single day. This is what lights me up and having real conversations about the ups and the downs. I was also chatting to someone else this morning. I've had a busy day. I've had a lot of phone calls today um, about like the re- the difference between vanity stats like numbers of views on youtube numbers of people's on email lists numbers of subscribers all this sort of stuff and how that doesn't always equal dollars it's amazing how t- how people can get really caught up in what something looks like versus what it actually is and if you're on my email list if you're not you should be suzanne Col- suzanne Colberg.com forward slash newsletter my emails rock I am very deliberate in keeping my email numbers low because the more people that are on your list the more you have to pay for them so if you're on my list you'll know when I'm getting close to reaching a new um, threshold because I'll start sending a bunch of sales emails to deliberately clear off the people who are just there for the resources like yo there's you're not saying you have to buy from me if you just love reading my emails more power to you you're welcome to stay But whenever I send more than one sales email in a row, invariably I'll get an unsubscriber with a nasty ass message telling me, oh, you're just in this for the money. Do you do that to the supermarket? Like if you go buy some freaking bread and milk and then somehow end up on their email list because, you know, we get emails for everything. Do you reply to Woolies or Coles or whatever your local supermarket is and go, oh, you're just in it for the money? Uh, They're running a business. I'm running a business too. I'm not just in it for the money. I do love everybody who, you know, comments and shares and interacts with me. But also at the end of the day, I am running a business. So you're entitled to like whatever opinion and stuff that you have. But part of my fumbling forward is sometimes I send a bunch of sales emails in a row. Sometimes I don't. And it's finding the rhythm and the flow and what works for you. So I tend to email once a week. I think that they're valuable. I enjoy writing them. It's unique stuff not shared here on the podcast or on my page. And um, sometimes I sell shit, but I'm not underhanded or secretive about selling. I'm direct like I am on the show. Very recently, I was um, on the receiving end of emails and the subject heading for the email was, it was either how to get more clients or do you want to get more clients? So as an entrepreneur, that had me opening it. I was like, hmm. Yes. Don't we all want more clients, business to grow? And it was a basically waffle. (laughs) And then at the very end, and it was like, and if you really want to get more clients, buy my course link. And I'm like, so which, which is worse? Hey, I've got a really awesome program. It's starting next week. Want to come? Here's the link and being direct. Like I've done a whole episode. Why wait? Shameless plug. Or hiding it in some supposed value <clears throat> fluff and then at the end going, and if you want the true answer, buy my thing. 
Anyway, all this to say, what does fumbling forward or fumble fucking your way through look like for you in whatever area of your life? How you do one thing is how you do most things. I don't agree with the saying how you do one thing is how you do everything. Uh, Personally, I disagree with that. How you do one thing is how you do most things. So how you tend to fumble forward in your business is probably how you do it in parenting, uh, in relationships, in housework. Um, That's another one. As I said, it's been a really busy day here today. In the bathroom, you don't have that drain um, in case the shower floods or whatever so the water goes down it. Accidentally the other day, Xanthi snapped it. Like it's been... It's been on the outs for a while, but she stood on it and the drain thing, the plastic on top of it just kind of disintegrated. So I had a a handyman out today, um, handy person. I don't want to be gender, not fair, but a handy person here today. And they were like, well, when I replace it, it's going to be white. It's gone yellow because of the aging, but the inside is going to be white and the outside is going to be yellow because of the previous fit. I was like, I don't care. Is it functional? Yes. <laughs> That's all that matters. Now, for some people, they probably want the entire system replaced and it needs to all be white or they might paint it. Oh, I don't know. But, you know, fumbling forward. Do I have a functional bathroom that no one's foot's going to accidentally slip in when they walk in there in the middle of the night? Yes, that'll do. Whereas, you know, people who are more ascetic might have to have the whole thing replaced. There is nothing wrong with how anybody else does things, it's finding the fumbling forward for you. Try saying that for three times fast. Anyway, this has been a fabulous episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. What has been your biggest takeaway? If you're watching on YouTube, let me know in the comments. And if you've listened to a few of these shows and you love them and you'd like to support my wacky t-shirt and chai addiction, please send me through a um, a thing on PayPal. And it's funny, I, I sent the person I who gave me the donation to thank you. And we had a bit of a back and forth and they were like, how much do we send? I don't want it to be scabby. There is no such thing as scabby. Honestly, all donations are gratefully appreciated. It's never how much money that somebody sends. It's the fact that they took the time to do so. I appreciate that so much. And, you know, love me a latte. A chai costs $5. It's, It's whatever. Everything is appreciated. Thank you for tuning in. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye for now.